Hi guys, in this video, we'll be going through some tips on how to prepare yourself, how to best prepare yourself, no matter what the question comes out in paper 3 for physics, chemistry and biology. I want to stress that this is not Sohalan Ramalan. Unfortunately, I don't have any fortune telling powers. Now let's get right to it. In this video, we're going to discuss five things. First of all, the most important thing is how to identify your MV manipulated variable and your responding variable RV from the question. Second, we're going to learn how to draw tables according to your measurements. Third, we are going to see how to write the hypothesis. And fourth, we are going to see how to record your values and how many decimal places to use depending on which instrument that you use. Finally, we are going to look at operational definition. Let's get started with the first one. Identifying MV and RV is the most crucial step because you are going to use your MV and your RV for your hypothesis, to draw your table, for your operational definition. And your MV and RV is usually given to you in the question. So now I'm going to teach you how to pick it out from the question. Let's look at the physics question first. Carry out an experiment to investigate the relationship between. Now this is one way that they can frame the question. An experiment to investigate the relationship between. If it is framed this way, the two things that come after between will be the MV and the RV. So let's identify what it is in this question. After between, we have the distance between the double slit and screen D. You will see an N to separate the two. And the distance between two consecutive blue fringes X. So now we have two things here. How to know which is MV, how to know which is RV. The manipulated variable is what you set in the beginning of the experiment. And the responding variable will be what you measure or what you observe at the very end of the experiment. So between the distance between the double slits and the screen and the distance between two consecutive blue fringes, which are we setting at the beginning? So our MV is, we will be setting the distance between the double slit and the screen. This is what we will be setting at the beginning. We'll be adjusting the distance. And after we turn on the light, at the very end of the experiment, the blue fringes will form this will be our RV. We will be measuring the distance between two consecutive blue fringes. So this is how you determine the MV and the RV. Look at what is happening in the beginning, what you are setting in the beginning, and what is being measured, the final outcome at the end of the experiment. Let's try a chemistry question. Conduct an experiment to determine the heat of displacement for copper 2 sulfate solution with two different types of metals. So when the question is framed in this way, conduct an experiment to determine whatever comes after determine is usually the responding variable. To determine this, the heat of displacement for copper 2 sulfate solution, therefore this is the responding variable. So our responding variable will be heat of displacement for copper 2 sulfate solution or just heat of displacement will do. So you can just pluck it out from the question. And then the MV manipulated variable here will be, you can see you are using two different types of metal. Manipulated variable is something that you are going to change when the experiment is repeated. So what is the manipulated variable here? It is the types of metals. Types of metals. Now, Just a note here. In case you are not sure what the title should be. So let's say, let me modify the question a bit. So let's say the question gives you the names of the metals. So two different types of metals, namely zinc and iron. Okay, zinc and iron. So if you do not know what is the title that you should use, then you could also answer zinc and iron. Zinc or iron is wrong. Please do not make that mistake. It should be zinc and iron. So you can actually state all the different manipulated variables out. You can list it out like this, zinc and iron. It is accepted. But if the question has already given you types of metals, then it is easier to just use types of metals. Now let's try a bio question. Carry out an experiment to determine, now once again you can see this is a similar framing of the question. Carry out an experiment to determine Whatever comes after determine is usually the responding variable. To determine the contents of vitamin C in fruit juice X and fruit juice Y. So what is our responding variable here? Responding variable, 
Now, if you are familiar with the theory, then you would know the type of content that we are looking for is the concentration of vitamin C. And then our manipulated variable. What is the manipulated variable in this situation? In the manipulated variable is that we are using two different types of fruit juice. Fruit juice X and fruit juice Y. So, you should answer types of fruit juices. So, this is how you pick out the MV and the RV from the question. Just read through the question and try to figure out what you are setting in the beginning and what you are observing or measuring at the end of the experiment. What in the beginning is the MV, what's done at the end is the responding variable. Now, using the MV and RV, we can go on to other things, other parts of the experiment. So, let's look at number two. How to draw tables. So generally, when you are drawing tables, the table will consist of the first header will be the manipulated variable and the second will be the responding variable. This is a very simple general table. This is the general format. Manipulated variable and responding variable. Now let's try to do this according to the questions. So from this question, we know that the MV is the distance between the double slits in the screen. And the responding variable is the distance between two consecutive blue fringes. So how do we construct a table here? If we need to construct a table to present our data, of course, most of the time they will provide you with guidelines. What should be the header and what should be filled in? But let's just pretend we don't have any information. So what we have to start with is this, the MV. So we start with the MV. And whenever we write, whenever we do our table, you must always include the units inside the table itself. In measuring this distance, we will be using a meter rule. And therefore, the units that we should use here is in centimeters. The second column should consist of the responding variable. When we tabulate our data, we must ensure that every single piece of data that has been measured is included in our answer except for when the question specifically states otherwise. So for example, in this experiment, you usually wouldn't measure the distance between just two fringes. You will measure the distance between several fringes and then divide to get a more accurate answer. And so that must be reflected in the table as well. But here, since no instruction is given, we are just going to assume that you're measuring one. And so the distance between two consecutive blue fringes, again, units must be in the header. Units cannot be written together with the data. And then we can go on to our data. So the distance, for example, you follow the question. If you first were given 20 centimeters, then you use 20 here. So you cannot write centimeters here, inside here. This is wrong. So you have to leave it at 20. And then you record the distance between two consecutive blue fringes and so on. So you just go on. And whatever we measure has to be in a specific number of decimal places. We'll go through that a bit later. So this is the table for this question. Let's look at the second example. In this experiment, we've already identified our MV as the type of metals and the RV is the heat of displacement. In this case, it's a little bit different. Our MV still remains as type of metals. So in our first column, we will write type of metals, but our RV we are not measuring the heat of displacement here. So once again, whatever data that is measured or observed during the experiment, this is the responding variable that we're going to record in the table. So for the heat of displacement experiment, what we are actually recording is the temperature change. But you don't have to worry too much about this because you will be guided. There will be some guidelines as to what to include inside the table. So in this case, the first thing we should record is the temperature change. So temperature change, we have units and that is degree Celsius. So we write degree Celsius here. So this will be the header of our table. Sometimes you will be required to do calculation and also include heat of displacement. Heat of displacement will be in kilojoules per mole, usually. Again, the concept here is your first column must be the MV, the second column must be the part of the responding variable that you are measuring or observing. Let's try the third example. So once again, we start with the MV in the first column. This is not an issue. Now, once again, in the second column, we are not directly measuring the concentration of vitamin C. This is done in calculation. What you are measuring during the experiment will be the 
the volume of fruit juice needed to decolorize the DCPIP uh, DCPIP solution. So this again we need our units. Our units when for this experiment will normally be in milliliters because we are using a syringe. So the units on the syringe on is normally ml. So this is how we do the header. Once again you may be required to do calculation and add another column for concentration of vitamin C. So once again when you are preparing the table the first column will be the manipulated variable. The second column will be the responding variable that you are measuring or observing during the experiment. Not necessarily what is given from the question or the final responding variable. Now let's go on to hypothesis. How do you write your hypothesis? It's a very simple way to do this. Of course, there's not just one way. There are several methods. But the way that I always teach my students is you use the format when the MV increases or decreases depending on the experiment rv increases or decreases accordingly you can use this very simple frame to do your hypothesis for any question well almost any question because some questions the manipulated variable does not increase or decrease it may be qualitative instead of quantitative so for example if you are using different types of metals you cannot say when the type of metal increase or decrease it doesn't make any sense so how do you write your hypothesis in this case you use your conclusion as your hypothesis so these are the two ways that you can use to write your hypothesis depending on what the variables are so let's try with the examples let's apply this to this example so once again we have the mv and the rv already determined earlier now the distance between the double slits and the distance between the two consecutive fringes. So in this case, both are quantitative. And so we can say when, then you copy down the MV, when the distance between the double slits D and the screen D increases. So we can put here increases. Then after that, comma, the RV. So the distance between the two consecutive. So this whether it increases or decreases you should be able to tell from doing your experiment but if you understand the theory then you know that they are directly proportional and so we would say that the distance between two consecutive blue fringes increases as well and that's it this is the hypothesis as simple as that now let's try the second example so here our mv is not quantitative it is qualitative there is no increase and decrease in type of metals so what do we do here? We have to use the conclusion method to write our hypothesis. So in this case, you would say that the heat of displacement for the reaction between iron and copper 2 sulfate solution in the electrochemical series or in the standard electrode potential series, the position of zinc is higher than iron. And therefore, the heat of displacement will be higher when the reaction is with zinc. So, between iron and copper 2 sulfate solution is lower. The heat of displacement is actually lower than the heat of, reaction, the heat of displacement for the reaction between zinc and copper 2 sulfate solution. This is how we do hypothesis for questions that don't have a quantitative manipulated variable or responding variable. Let's do the bio example. Once again, a manipulated variable is a type of fruit juices, so it is not quantitative. You cannot quantify it as increasing or decreasing. And so we have to use the conclusion format. So we say that the concentration of vitamin C, concentration of vitamin C in, so here depends on the outcomes of the experiment. So I'm just going to say fruit juice X is greater than in fruit juice Y. This of course depends on your experiment. Next, let's look at how to record measurements. Recording measurements is very important and very easy for you to get marks because as long as you take a measurement and you write it down, there is no one specific answer to it. As long as it is within reasonable range and the most important thing is for you to get your number of decimal places right. So the number of decimal places that you record will depend on the measuring instrument that you use. So first, the most common one is the meter rule. When you're using a meter rule, we normally write down our answers in centimeters. 
and so the number of decimal places that you need to use is one so for example if the reading that you got was one centimeter you cannot just write one you have to write 1.0 of course in the table we would not put the units because the units will be at the header as we discussed earlier units must always be at the header not inside the table where the data is being recorded for vernier calipers the units that we usually use is centimeter and you need to include two decimal places so for example if the reading is one you cannot write one you must write 1.00 for micrometer screw gauge, we also use two decimal places, but the unit is in millimeters. So if the unit is in centimeters, you need three decimal places. So when the unit is in millimeters, you use two decimal places. So again, 1.00. For an electronic balance to measure the mass of a substance, we also use two decimal places. The units will be in grams. So the example is 1.00. Please ensure that you do not use just the whole number. You must put 0 0.00. For voltmeter and ammeter, we use one decimal place. The unit for voltmeter is volts. The unit for ammeter is amperes. And so the example will be 1.0. Just one decimal place. For stopwatch, this is if you are using the analog stopwatch, not the digital stopwatch. So the one with the needle that goes around. So here the unit is in seconds. And the number of decimal places is usually 1. So again, 1.0. For a burette, the burette reading is in 2 decimal places. And the reading is in centimeter cubes. So again, for a burette, you need to do 1.00. 2 decimal places, not 1. And for a thermometer, again, we are not talking about a digital thermometer. We are talking about the mercury thermometer or the alcohol thermometer that you use. So here, again, one decimal place the units will be in degrees celsius and the example will be 1.0 so this is how you record measurements be very careful to use the proper decimal places so as to not lose marks finally we're going to look at how to write the operational definition this seems to be a mystery with a lot of students don't worry operational definition once again we have to make use of the manipulated variable and the responding variable so there are a few rules that you need to follow for chemistry, it is normally, for chemistry specifically, you have to include two things. Number one, what is done. And number two, what is observed. So how do you know what is done? What is done is usually in your manipulated variable. And what is observed will be your responding variable. This is all you have to use. So let's use our question from earlier as the example heat of displacement so let's say the question is state the operational definition for heat of displacement how do we answer this question based on our mv and rb so first we need to think about what is observed so what is observed here once again you have to be careful because we do not observe the heat of displacement you must be very careful. What you observe is really what you measure or what is observed at the end of the experiment. What you see or what you measure. We do not see or we do not measure the heat of displacement. What we measure in this experiment at the end is the temperature change. The final temperature which we then subtract the initial temperature form to get the change in temperature. Which we use to calculate the heat of displacement. So we will start the answer by saying that it is the increase in temperature, heat of displacement, the temperature will increase. So the increase in temperature, this is what is observed, what is done. So you have to include what, the, what you did in manipulating the manipulated variable. So what do we do here? How do we use the different types of metals when different types of metals are reacted with copper to sulfate solution so this is what is done so what is observed is the increase in temperature what is done is we are placing different types of metals inside copper to sulfate solution to react you cannot say the heat of displacement is the heat change when one mole of metal is displaced from a salt solution by a more electropositive metal you can't do that that is not defining operationally now let's try one for bio. For biology is a bit different. For biology, first we state what is observed. 
the first is what is observed we are looking at the observed rv the observed responding variable and then the second line should be rv is affected by mv these are the two points that you need to state for biology in operational definition so state the operational definition for concentration of vitamin c so again we look at the rv the concentration of vitamin C is our RV here from the question, but this is not what is observed again. What we observed to determine the RV was the volume of the fruit juice required to decolorize 1 ml of BCPIP solution. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. So we have to say concentration of vitamin C is the volume of fruit juice required or used to decolorize 1 ml of BCVIP solution. This is the responding variable. Then we say RV is affected by MV. And so we say the concentration of vitamin C is affected by the types of fruit juices. So this is how we do operational definition for biology. That's it for this video, guys. I really hope that you've learned something. I hope that you'll be able to be better prepared to face the paper when it comes. And those of you who are going to sit for your exams very soon, which is probably why you're watching this, all the best to you. Just go and do your very best and the rest doesn't matter. If you've learned something from this video, I'd really appreciate it if you just hit that like button. It really does help the channel uh, with the growth. And if you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe because I'll be producing at least one a week. See you guys in the next video.